Okay, uh, thank you, Patricia, for your kind introduction. Um, I'm very happy to be part of this uh, symposium. So I would like to thank you and also the other organizers for uh, this opportunity. I will uh, uh, show you some of our um, recent uh, work regarding biomimetic systems of uh, iron-iron hydrogenase with a uh, focus on uh, um, our computational uh, results. So I don't need to introduce you, um, iron iron hydrogenase, of course. I will just mention that uh, the uh, unique structure of the H cluster in, in light of its uh, uh, um, organometallic nature has triggered um, a huge biomimetic uh, work over the past few decades. So the approach behind this, uh, the, the logic behind this approach is try to design and synthesize uh, small and simple molecular catalysts that are inspired by the structure and the function of the H cluster. And uh, in the case of iron iron hydrogenase, for example, we learned from this process that uh, reproducing with high fidelity the structure of the H cluster may not be the most promising strategy in order to have uh, high efficiencies. And so, for example, here, efficiency generally um, increase with uh, uh, this arrow. And so going for from purely structural to purely functional, we can say, analogs. And um, in the past years, we have studied a lot uh, these uh, kind of the iron diuretic systems. They are quite interesting because uh, they share the same the iron unit that is found in the H cluster. And so it's possible to make uh, useful comparison between the features of uh, the active site and artificial mm -hmm. systems. Um, we have studied them a lot in the last years, um, also thanks to the um, collaboration with the outstanding experimental group uh, in this field. Um, the, the, um, unfortunately, these kind of systems, these kind of catalysts still do not reach the um, efficiencies of the natural systems. Um, so the, the ambitious goal is trying to fill the gap and to uh, tune uh, the, the properties and the structure and the mechanistic features of the systems in order to increase their efficiencies. Before I uh, go into the description of our work, I first need to um, introduce you uh, the, let's say, the common thread of the presentation. So if you are familiar with uh, iron iron hydrogenase, you should know that uh, uh, high rates, so fast catalysis is compatible with uh, um, this conformation that is called in the hydrogenase jargon rotated because the two square pyramids that uh, describe the two, uh, the, the coordination environment of the two metals are one inverted or rotated with respect to the other. And uh, this conformation can be stabilized by ad hoc uh, uh, H bonds with the protein matrix. So usually uh, protonation leads to um, terminal hydrides, which are um, very reactive, both towards reduction and uh, protonation. And so catalysis uh, uh, proceeds fast. Uh, by contrast in biomimetic systems, uh, and I specifically refer to the iron-1, iron-1 biomimetic uh, diiron diuretic systems, since are the ones that are uh, um, competent to uh, the hydrogen production in general. Uh, this is the um, preferred situation, and it's called unrotated. And so usually uh, bridging hydrides are formed. But bridging hydrides are quite stable, and so this can have a negative impact on uh, efficiencies. However, these equilibria may also exist in some case, and so, for example, uh, there can be an equilibrium between rotated and unrotated structures, and also between terminal and uh, hydrides, uh, and bridging hydrides, sorry. And uh, if it is the case, it may happen that uh, uh, terminal hydrides can be um, transiently formed because uh, although they are less stable with respect to their bridging counterpart uh, in the systems, uh, they are in general um, genetically preferred. So one, let's say, promising strategy may be trying to um, shift this equilibria towards this kind of more H-cluster-like situation that could, at least in principle, be um, uh, good to increase uh, uh, efficiencies. So I will um, tell you something about uh, these two uh, equilibria and also in, par in particular about uh, how this one 
can have uh, um, some kind of mechanistic implications about different applications. So um, I will show you some of our work about this of the recent years. Um, for what concerns the um, hydride issue, uh, many attempts in the past have been made uh, by several experimental group. Uh, here are some, just a few uh, references trying to uh, hinder the um, rotation of uh, transiently formed uh, terminal hydrides. And this can be done, for example, with steric tricks. So using very bulky chelating uh, uh, phosphine ligands or by strategies like this, for example, proposed by OTS, um, such as tethering the one ligand to the thiolate. But uh, in an investigation of uh, some years ago, we were asking, we were trying to uh, see at this issue uh, on an, for, from a different point of view, let's say. So the question is, uh, is it possible somehow to um, increase the reactivity of bridging hydrides that are formed? So uh, which are uh, the characteristics and the features that are needed in order to make a bridging hydride reactive? And to answer this question, we um, performed a systematic study. I will go into details of our results. It's just to show you that in general, uh, computational systematic study uh, a computer systematic study can be particularly uh, useful um, because uh, we can, uh, with DFT, in this case, uh, virtually uh, change the nature of the ligands and also of the datiolate and see what happens on a specific feature. So it's uh, we can understand, we can derive general principles that can be useful uh, for optimize, for example, a specific uh, feature of these systems. So here, for instance, we wanted to uh, calculate the reactivity of bridging and terminal hydrides of uh, an extended set of compounds towards reduction. And uh, we found that in some um, very specific case, we could obtain uh, uh, quite, uh, reactive, uh, quite reactive bridging hydrides. And uh, among the factors that contribute to this, there are the presence of uh, basic, uh, so electron donor ligands, uh, in particular if they are highly uh, bulky in the, uh, so highly uh, bulky uh, phosphines, for example, um, that complex asymmetry may help. Asymmetry means that the two uh, iron units are one more basic than the other, essentially. And also the presence of uh, op uh, a PDT, so a propan datiolate, uh, instead of a more biomimetic uh, other datiolate can uh, uh, increase the reactivity of a bridging hydride. Uh, we did something similar this year on this uh, on the rotated unrotated issue. Also, in this case, a lot of efforts have been made in the past. Uh, these slides essentially uh, collect all of the examples that have been proposed, um, according to which uh, a rotated conformation uh, has been predicted to be um, more stable or close in energy with respect to the to a non-rotated one. And um, I'm referring to um, fully rotated conformation because uh, um, there are also examples of semi-rotated, so in which this rotation is not, let's say, full. For example, proposed by the group of Darensburg, Lubitz, Weygand, um, and so on. Uh, these two in the box have been experimentally characterized by Tom Rauschfuss and Philippe Scholomer. All these values that you see come from DFT calculations and uh, that have been obtained in different years, in different works, uh, essentially uh, from us and from uh, Tai and Hall in 2006 that uh, did a, a, a pioneering contribution in this, on this topic. And uh, if we look at the system, we can see that we have uh, recurrent features. So for example, uh, in um, many cases, uh, um, uh, sterically hindering uh, the thiolate is used, uh, because uh, it, it somehow forces the rotation at one iron unit. And um, also in some cases, uh, some kind of agostic interaction can be formed with the metal. In uh, essentially all of them, um, there's a, a, um, a symmetry in the iron cord in the coordination spheres of the two irons. So it seems to be a, a crucial feature for uh, uh, stabilized rotation. But there's uh, this uh, isolate, let's say, case in which we don't have a bulky datiolate and we don't have uh, um, asymmetry. But uh, we noticed in a collaboration with uh, Tom Rauschfuss in 2016 
that uh, in this isocyanide-based scaffold, uh, the rotating conformation is quite stable. And uh, so we, um, we, we noticed that while we were trying to um, rationalize the redox behavior of this compound. So for, for other reasons, we serendipitously found that uh, this relative conformation can be quite stable. And so it seems that uh, also a, a set of strong donor ligands without a symmetry or a, a static tricks can contribute to stabilize a rotated conformation. So this year we uh, performed again a systematic study on this kind of uh, isocyanide based systems. And uh, we found, uh, let's say, a uh, rational to um, design a, um, uh, a very stable, uh, um, to design very stable rotated uh, forms in, uh, in this kind of systems. And so again, for example, we found that asymmetry, introducing asymmetry may further stabilizing uh, uh, rotation, the presence of PDT is preferred instead of ADT again. And also we found that, uh, uh, for example, replacing the methyl groups with um, aromatic moieties that can force this kind of dispersive forces, dispersive interactions, uh, is beneficial for rotation because um, in this conformation, they are uh, let's say maximized, okay? Um, so the first interesting thing is that actually in, in the two uh, topics, the, um, the factors that we found being uh, crucial are essentially the same or very similar, uh, even if for different reasons, maybe in some case, but also there is another interesting fact. Um, this is something that already Hall noticed in his uh, contribution, and that the uh, the fact that uh, uh, rotation is accompanied by a charge transfer, an intramolecular charge transfer, and in particular, uh, um, it, it is from the unit that uh, does not rotate to the other one. So uh, the blue unit uh, increases its negative charge, the rotated one. But in this case, we also found that. Uh, this charge transfer nicely correlates with the free energy for rotation, which, which means that uh, it, it is the quantity that, that we need to maximize if we want to have a very stable rotated form in this kind of, uh, in this kind of systems. Okay, I told you that uh, um, I, I also would have shown you how these uh, rotated unrotated equilibrium can affect, for example, reaction mechanisms and radiochemistry. But to do, to do so, I need to um, switch to other kind of applications other than the uh, hydrogen production one, because uh, uh, this kind of the iron data system actually are quite versatile. And um, that's interesting because also in nature, iron sulfur clusters are very promiscuous, as we all know. Um, so, for example, some of them have been proposed, uh, also quite few, uh, for um, H2 oxidation. So it's, uh, um, again, a um, hydrogenase-like reactivity, but looking at the opposite direction. Uh, some of them in, in the past has also been proposed as a CO2 uh, reduction catalyst. Uh, some systems, the iron data system with the scaffold, have been also proposed as uh, nitrogenase uh, biomimetics, for example, to, for ammonia production from hydrogen, hydrogens. Uh, there are also nice examples of uh, carbon hydrogen bond activation from Darisburg, soon, for example. Um, and also, they seem to have an intriguing reactivity uh, towards uh, the activation of carbon halogen bonds. And uh, we have an ongoing project on this topic in collaboration with uh, Philippe Chalamer. So we have just preliminary results, and uh, I can't tell you much about this project, but I would like to show you how this equilibrium can have uh, implication on the radiochemistry for these two specific applications. So the carbon halogen activation and H2 oxidation. Uh, in fact, what we noticed, for example, in this case, is that uh, the presence of disequilibrium in a specific compound uh, can explain the formation uh, experimentally uh, detected uh, of these two different products. And uh, these two different products can come from the same complex, uh, but in the presence of different uh, organochloride molecules. And uh, in this case, uh, uh, we, we use the FT to understand uh, why, and we show that uh, the, the key here is the, the strength 
of the um, carbon halogen bond in the um, that, that we want to activate. But I uh, I, I won't tell you uh, much about this, much more about this. I would like instead to um, spend a few words about uh, this other application. That's a work that we published with Philippe this year. And uh, that regards instead uh, the hydrogen activation. And uh, the, um, let's say the source of inspiration of this uh, project is again the uh, H cluster because uh, uh, it can be, uh, let's say, considered a frustrated Lewis pair system because we have uh, a Lewis base, that's the amine, and a Lewis acid, that's uh, the metal. And so uh, this situation is quite ideal if you want to um, heter heterolytically split uh, the hydrogen. So once uh, the hydrogen is found in between these two, this Lewis pair, it's uh, automatically split. Uh, so in this project, we um, this the same principle essentially was taken, but somehow inverted, which means that uh, two compounds were considered, two uh, simple and canonical, let's say, diiron dithiolate systems, one with uh, one phosphine per metal center, so one symmetric, and one asymmetric without uh, chelating um, phosphine. So two phosphine for complex, but in one case. Uh, uh, we have symmetry, and the, in the other case, we have asymmetry. And these two compounds in the presence of the hydrogen and of an external uh, strong and hindering Lewis acid uh, give the two uh, bridging hydride, the corresponding bridging hydride products. And so which means that uh, H2 has been split heterolytically. So uh, with this strategy, it was possible to activate the hydrogen. Uh, but the, the fact is that uh, uh, it seems that the geometry of the compound has an effect on this because uh, in symmetric system, the conversion is uh, um, more efficient, okay, than in the case of a symmetric one. And so we use DFT to study the mechanism and understand uh, why. So in the first case, when we have a, a symmetric system, we don't have this equilibrium because uh, if you followed me in the uh, previous issues regarding uh, uh, rotation, asymmetry in this kind of, of system with uh, CO and phosphine seems to be a constant in order to have uh, um, rotation, to observe rotation. So here in this case, we don't have a disequilibrium. What happens is that uh, the hydrogen reacts uh, in the bridging region. And uh, you can see that overall the, um, activation barriers are, are quite uh, low, okay, in energy. Uh, for what concerns instead the asymmetric compound, this is the lowest energy pathway that we calculated. And uh, in this case, these equilibrium do exist. So these species can be populated, the, the rotated one. In general, you can see that we have uh, quite higher activation barriers and that would explain uh, the, the lower uh, uh, conversion, for example. But the interesting thing is that uh, we are changing the geometry of the compound and the mechanism is different because here we have the formation of a transient terminal hydride that finally uh, uh, interconvert into its uh, most stable uh, bridging counterpart. And uh, we also have a, um, a proof, let's say, of our uh, proposed mechanism because uh, Philippe uh, was able to detect with, uh, with low temperature NMR, this terminal hydride in this case, but not in the previous one. Okay, so I finished. I hope I convinced you that uh, um, in general, DFT calculations can provide uh, uh, useful hints about uh, uh, different uh, aspects, uh, structural and uh, um, reactive uh, aspects on this kind of biomimetic systems uh, um, related to different topics and, and, and applications. I didn't go much into details about uh, DFT results because I know that uh, we all come from different backgrounds. So if you have any curiosity, don't hesitate to ask. I would like to thank, of course, my the, the computational groups of Milan, uh, in particular Luca, Giuseppe, and uh, Luca from my group, but also Claudio from the Environmental Science Department. And of course, a special thank uh, to uh, the experimental groups that uh, worked with us uh, in these last years on uh, uh, different and beautiful biomimetic systems. And of course, I would like to thank you for uh, your kind attention. Of